In this video, we are going to look at visualizing Ansible facts inside Splunk. Now, in a lot of large enterprises, Splunk is a common log ingestion tool. And Ansible is a common automation tool. However, a lot of people don't realize that Ansible also has a very, very powerful fact database for every single server that it connects to. Now imagine if you could visualize that inside of Splunk. You could answer questions like, how many Red Hat 7 machines do I have left in the environment? How many servers weren't patched last month? And you know what? You could even write your own custom facts to be able to answer any question you want. And please stick with me to the end of this video where we do the same thing as we're going to do at the beginning in Linux on a Windows host, just to show you that this amazing tool doesn't just stop at Linux. We can gather the same type of information from Windows. So let's go and have a look and let's see exactly how to set all of this up. So we can see here, I've pulled in a kernel. I've pulled in OS information. I've pulled in uptime information and I've pulled in machines needing a reboot. All of these to me are useful. Kernel information will show me if something's been patched, if it's using an old kernel perhaps. OS information will show me that this CentOS 7.6 machine here probably needs to be patched up to at least 7.9 here. These machines here showing that a reboot is needed shows that some kernels have been applied or some something has been applied, but the machine needs to perform that reboot. And the uptime is just a very quick indicator. Uh, sometimes if you patch your, if you, if you work in the fintech uh, space, uh, for example, your servers have got to be patched every 30 days. Uptime is a very easy way to see whether those servers have been patched as most patches these days require a kernel update. And if you're using, unless you're using something like case splice, you're going to be rebooting. So uptime again is a very, very quick way of being able to see. I've used an hour because these are just demo servers, but we could easily change that to 30 days. We'd have to do it in seconds, but we could get that information out. So let me talk through exactly how we did this. First and foremost, I knew that Ansible data is in JSON format. So my first port of call because I already knew, and I'll show you today, how to get the Ansible setup data, which is all the facts, into a file. I knew I could get Splunk to ingest any file that I give it. I then needed to understand exactly how to visualize that inside Splunk. So we did that using something called SPath and a custom index. So first and foremost, over to settings. And let's have a look at the different source types. Now you'll see down here that I've actually got a source type of Ansible test. So if this was your environment and you didn't have this source type already there, you would just click on new source type. Let's go and have a look at what that source type actually did. So we have a description. I obviously just copied the, the JSON one. You could just use the JSON one. The reason I didn't was uh, I wanted a timestamp out of it. But everything else is the same. The important bit here is the indexed instructions, which is set to JSON. It could be a CSV file. It could be nothing, etc. We've got TSVs, P PSVs, etc. You pick JSON and it's going to understand that this is a JSON file. So there we go. We've got a source type of Ansible test. It knows it's a JSON file. And then again, back to our data. What we're trying to understand is, okay, it knows it's JSON, but how do you pull the values out? Let's go and have a look. And here is that magic command. This S path allows you to then iterate through a JSON object to pull out the information that you want. So if we go across to the search and in the search, I'm just going to look through my search history, but we do a source type of Ansible test. 
We already saw that that was a custom source type. Let's just hit go. Here is how the data is coming in. So we've got a JSON object here. We look at the raw data, you can see exactly this JSON object here. A bit nicer when we see it like this. We can hit the pluses to go through the object. And then we've got varying different pieces of information that I've stored to be able to report on. So we've got distribution versions, FQDNs, etc., etc. This is These are all test servers, but the information is still valuable. You'll also see here Ansible underscore local. So these are custom facts. You can actually create facts on anything you want. And I've done one in this demonstration to show you how it works. So I've done a needs reboot fact. On Windows, you get a needs reboot fact anyway, but in Linux, you don't. So this needs reboot is taken from the yum utils package. There's a needs reboot binary in there, and you can run that and it will tell you whether you need to reboot or not. I create a very, very simple, in fact, it's two lines, bash script, to create a custom Ansible fact to be able to get this data out. So we can he see here it's a status of zero. So when we go and look at the service, I'll show you exactly how I did that. But obviously you could do this for anything. If you're trying to report on versions of software, if you're trying to report on if something is running or if something is connected, you could grep a log file looking for a particular value and print it out if you so choose. So here is what I decided to pick. Now let me go and show you the playbook that I used to get that information. So here's the playbook. It's called store facts. It's going to store it in var log and support data. And I've got a few roles here. The, the important role is this store fact one. The other ones are setting up the server to uh, have SSH keys and things like that. Uh, this is my custom fact that I'll go and show you. And then just setting up the Splunk forwarder. If we go and have a look at the actual task, we're using the setup module. I've put in some filters. For anyone using Splunk can uh, protest that Splunk is charged on data ingress. You don't want to be importing the entire fact uh, JSON file if you don't need all the data. You're just spending money for the sake of it. So I've filtered exactly what I want out of that file. I've registered it to a variable here called Ansible Facts. I've created a log directory. That fact folder there is taken from the playbook. So in var log, Ansible data is where it's going to be going. It's creating that folder. It's then copying the Ansible facts to a file in that folder. So Ansible facts is what we registered here. So we're just going to copy the contents out of that variable into this file. And then for those that have used Splunk before, it's simply a case of using the inputs.conf, specifying a monitor on this location. And then as I'll go and show you now, you just need to do one extra step to make sure that it gets into the correct source type. So let's go and have a look at the server. So here is that server. I am in var log Ansible data. There is a file in here. And this is what it looks like. Exactly the same as the JSON file that we just saw in Splunk. Ansible facts, kernel, FQDN, etc., etc. Now, just to give you an idea of exactly the type of data that we can get out of Ansible, let's go and have a look here. I'm not going to go through the entire file because it is large. But as we can see, and I'm going to scroll up pretty quick, we've got disk information, we've got, uh, I know there's memory information, we've got... Um, BIOS information, this is a virtual machine, as we can see here, but if it wasn't, you can get BIOS information, asset tags, serial numbers, things like that. You've got memory information here, processor information here, Python information, IP addresses, network information, more network information, and the list goes on. And then near the top, this is what is useful for us. The distribution, I'm using Alma Linux, which is a Red Hat variety. 
If you were using Ubuntu, that would say Ubuntu, and the file variety would be Debian. You've then got your distribution version, your majors. Um, you've got, uh, if it's got, you know, if it's using VMware virtualization, uh, any DNS you've got set up, name servers, and the list goes on. You can look at this at your leisure. There's a lot of data here, and that's why I use the filter to get the data out that I need. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you while we're here is the custom fact. So in etc Ansible, facts.d, we have got this needs reboot.fact. So in order to have a custom fact, it needs to be in this location, etc Ansible facts.d. It needs to be called something dot fact. And if it's a script, it needs to be executable. And if it's just JSON data, it doesn't. So you can just store, if I had needs reboot.fact and it was just a bit of JSON data, that would just get ingested as a custom fact and it'd be called needs reboot. Now, the interesting thing there is you could have a cron job that runs every day, gathers some information, stores it in JSON, and that would be it. You may already have some JSON that is outputted from a particular application, just symbolic link it or copy it into this location. Again, it would be ingested by Ansible. The big thing that I like is this. So you can have a look here. And this is a very, very simple script. So I've said it's a bash script. It could be anything. As long as you can execute it and it outputs JSON, that is the requirement. So this needs restarting is part of yum utils. So all I'm saying is needs restarting dash R. Put it to dev null. I don't need to see the output of it. But the exit status of that is what I'm interested in. And here's that exit status that we're printing out. It's either a zero or a one, depending on if it needs rebooting or not. So I'm just doing a very simple echo. And I'm just echoing out something in JSON. So if we actually were to run that, just JSON that comes out. And that is the requirement for a custom fact. You could make it do it for anything. And then, in Splunk, so opt Splunk forwarder, etc, local, no, system, local, inputs.com. We've got a monitor, var log, ansible data, ansible facts. That's the file that we just had a look at. And this is that important bit, that source type. Source type equals ansible test is what I called it. That source type knows that it's JSON coming in. So you set this source type to JSON, it'll allow you to use that S path to be able to look at the data in a much easier way and be able to you know, create those things that I showed you at the beginning. Now, in the introduction, I explained that this also works with Windows. Let me go and show you. So here I have a Windows role. Again, I collect facts, I'm using the setup module, I'm filtering out some information. This Ansible reboot pending is something that on a Windows host you have access to already out the box, but you don't on a Linux host. We're registering it. We have to use the win file module instead of the file module and the win copy module instead of the copy module because this is Windows. And yes, I've done my task separately instead of doing a, you know, only do this if it's a Linux machine and only do that if a Windows machine. I just find it easier to have you know, particular uh, roles that are for specific operating systems. And then I've got two playbooks. So I've got my Linux playbook that we've been going through and my Windows playbook here. It looks exactly the same. It's got my role. It's got that I'm only going to be using the Windows hosts and to store everything in CTAMP and small facts. So let's go and have a look at that Windows host. So here is my Windows host. So in C, temp, Ansible facts, we've got Ansible facts. And here they are. Let's make them look a bit nicer. Here are all the Ansible facts. And again, if I'd run that playbook right now, it would only give me a subsection. But I wanted to show you how we can get all of the Ansible facts out. Again, we've got IP addresses. We've got Windows domain roles. We've got 
so much information here, OS information, etc., etc., and the list goes on. Network information, host FQDNs here, processors, etc., etc. So again, some very, very valuable information. And it's the same thing. So if we go to our inputs.conf in our Splunk Universal Forward on our Windows machine, it's identical. We need the location, C temp, Ansible fax. Ansible fax is where I'm storing it. And then the source type is Ansible test. This disabled false I don't actually need. But the source type is Ansible test. Restart your service. It's going to push it in to Splunk and Jobs. I really hope that video was useful. You could see Ansible facts being displayed nicely in Splunk. And really, your imagination is what's holding you back now. Have a think about what type of facts you could display in Splunk. What type of custom facts you could write to really get some value out of these dashboards. And please put a comment in and let me know what you've managed to do. And as always, if you found this video useful, please subscribe. Thank you.